Yeah, let's do some DeFi stuff. People interested in... I guess let's do the Harmony stuff first, since we were talking about Vipers. Yeah, you can go through the Viper stuff. But... Let's go through that really quick here. Here's why I am into Viper Squad. Let I also me... think just in general, before you start, I'll say that, like, I don't think us repeating the same topics a few times is a bad idea, just because, like, a lot of stuff is very high concept, and, like, people are not learning it all in one hour. Like, Yeah, that's true. We can do the same show twice, and people... You can literally repeat the same thing twice, and people will learn new things the second time, just because, like, they understand the concepts better from the first time, so... Like in general, I don't think yeah. it's like just because we did a, something one time doesn't mean we should ever, never do it again. That's true. Okay, yeah, good point. Let's uh, let's yeah. talk about some DeFi here. Yeah, it these are pretty high cool. concept things. So, so I'll start kind of like just go over it from scratch again, since we'll assume we didn't talk about this before. ViperSwap is a uh, decentralized exchange protocol on the Harmony blockchain that should look familiar to a lot of people who've done swaps on other blockchains before because it is a distant cousin of the original uniswap on ethereum so this is basically uniswap with pieces of sushi swap and uh bio finance kind of like baked, baked into like like a fork of all those codes kind of mashed into one so you have this swap and the way that these swaps work is if you you know go to viperswap.1 it'll ask you to connect to harmony so if you have a metamask wallet installed you can say connect to Harmony, and then it'll uh, ask you to switch to the network. And if you don't have the network added to MetaMask, it'll prompt you to add the network so that you don't have to figure out how to do that. With So then you'll basically, inside your MetaMask wallet from then on, you'll, not, you'll see you'll be on the Harmony mainnet, and you'll have a Harmony mainnet as an option that you can toggle between. So you can see, you can switch back to Ethereum and then swap back to Max. Harmony. How do you like this for a, a show name? <laughs> I'm the KY says Max is DeFi Boner, and then Least Comic Center <laughs> says it's pronounced like Boner. <laughs> <laughs> Max is DeFi Boner. Hold on, let me sit up. I got it. It's Levio Saw. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's too funny. Um, okay, and we're back on my screen here. Okay. Now I can actually use my mouse. So uh, I've connected my MetaMask and then I've given MetaMask uh, the Harmony mainnet through just coming to ViperSwap.1 and uh, clicking, you know, click, uh, what was it? Connect to Harmony. So like I said, now you can always toggle between Ethereum and Harmony right up here on your wallet. So we're going to be on the Harmony mainnet now. And then the way that this works is if you have harm, if you have any assets on this blockchain, you can trade them like... Uh, Viper is the the token for this protocol, which the part of the thing that you can do with Viper is stake it to get a cut of all the liquidity yield. And that liquidity yield comes from trading on this platform and trading happens like this, where let's say you want to buy uh, like DAI is a stable coin, like a US dollar stable coin. And you have your one. So if I want like $10, it's going to cost me 58 one. And this transaction is moving directly between uh, DAI and one, it looks like. I don't know if you already uh, said because... it, this is basically just Uniswap on Harmony. Yeah. If you've ever used Uniswap on Ether, you will recognize the interface. It's basically just that. So there isn't someone on the other end of this trade right now who's offering to buy my one with this, but instead this trade is coming from what's called a liquidity pool, where a bunch of people are pooling their assets to make these types of transactions possible. And the way that the protocol incentivizes participation inside this li these liquidity pools is by distributing the Viper token to people who contribute liquidity, which you can participate in this process by clicking on their stake and then pools, and you'll see what they're currently offering in incentives. So right now, there's a thousand thirty-three percent APR paid for liquidity provided in WS Wagme and Viper, for example. So you could scroll through this list and find tokens that you are comfortable holding uh, in a liquidity pair. Like, uh, let's say, like here's any BTC, which is Bitcoin, uh, bridged over by the Any Bridge protocol, which is a uh, which is a blockchain bridge that bridges between several different blockchains and then issues, you know, the wrapped asset onto the destination area. So on this, it's called Any Bitcoin. There's also W Bitcoin or Ren Bitcoin, depending on which bridge the Bitcoin hit the smart chain side of the DeFi space from the Bitcoin mainnet. So basically, this is just Bitcoin uh, wrapped through this protocol. 
and this is paired against one. So here you're getting 1,714% APR paid in Viper token for contributing Bitcoin in one. But are you so, also getting the, you know, like percentage fees of the pool itself? Yeah, so you're also getting, if you click the charts button here, it'll open up uh, the current Viper swap kind of like analytics page. And you can see uh, the pools they'll load here in a second you can see like everything happening on the viper swap at the moment so the viper token payout is an additional incentive in their native token on top of the existing liquidity pool um fees and rewards that you accumulate just pick yeah. yeah so here's yeah i'll show you how that looks uh so here you can see all the tokens on viper swap and how much liquidity exists for that token and then a little below that it'll show you in what pairs that liquidity exists so for example euphoria wag me token has eight million dollars worth of liquidity on this pool and looks like of the eight million nine million is dai wag me meaning that half of this pair is you know so that's almost five million dollars four and a half million dollars of wag me is is paired with die leaving us with about another three million or so that needs to be paired somewhere else and here it is there's wag me in one so this is one and a half million so there's probably one more wag me pair somewhere what is wag me wag me is a token. so wag me is a here if you click wag me it's like built by aged beef crypto uh <laughs> exactly so wag me is actually a um it's kind of like an ohm fork or like a wonderland style uh basically it's uh, it's like a, what would you call that? It's like a reserve asset. Basically, to create WAGME tokens, you can use like DAI, USDC, B BTC, all these currencies. You can basically use them to mint new WAGME tokens into existence. And then the WAGME token itself becomes backed by these assets. So currently, one WAGME is backed by $150 worth of these mintable assets, which includes liquidity positions as well as just direct stable coins uh if the price of the wagme token then which is currently 382 dollars were to fall below this 150 area the treasury balance would be used to buy the wagme token keeping this price you know basically around 150 but then the concept of why is it worth more than its actual backing comes from the uh game theory in play here where when you own wagme token you can stake it and the staking apy is insane like 1.2 million dollar or percent uh in a year so this every like in one hour if you owned wagme in one hour this will this will if it's staked one hour 11 minutes from now you'll get paid out uh here the next reward yield almost almost a full like percentage in in wagme which you can then immediately unstake and sell again but because of the concept of uh the game theory of you can not sell it and wait another four hours or whatever until the next thing goes and ultimately like make money off the yield here um it's like this interesting game theory dynamic that tries that drives this price into like speculation territory this is a really strange asset I, i'm not sure if i would uh mess with it too much although i i am like playing around with it just because this insane apy would mean that if i bought some wag me today uh and then waited 30 days and in 30 days the price fell 50 percent, i would still make money on my investment like if you were to stake like one of these tokens you want to get back to viper swap though yeah yeah exactly so this is wag me this is that asset so there's that's just a different like asset so they're incentivizing liquidity for those assets uh and the way they incentivize it is by distributing this viper token so if you you can participate in this by let's say you want any btc and one which you're okay with holding these in a liquidity pair you could come up here to the pool uh create a pair choose okay you already have one there and then say any btc here then if I have my 5-1 here I would have to counterpart it with this amount of any BTC and you know participate once I once I get this in here I can like start earning the stake yield so I'd have to 
contribute this and then come back up here to staking and then deposit the liquidity position into this pool to get a cut of this uh, APR. Um, let's see, I can... And that APR up. is like the Viper token payout. Yeah, the APR is the Viper token payout and this 1,700%, this you're getting this every single block. So every like two to three seconds, this like is claimable, but 95% of the balance that you're earning is locked. So you'll see up here in your Viper balance, you're, you'll have your pending rewards unlocked and locked. And then the, the locked rewards on Christmas day on, 20, on the 25th, start to unlock in a linear fashion. I love that like, happens on Christmas. What if I <laughs> yeah, right. It's a, what a nice Christmas place. miracle, everybody. <laughs> What's unclear to me is that after Christmas, if you're still mining new Viper in locked balance, or if at that point all new Viper is unlocked, I'm not 100% sure. Thanks for that. Um, but for sure, right now, you could make insane yields with this. like, uh, And then basically get them starting on christmas over the next full year like linearly so if you're making like a few thousand of these viper tokens in the next several months and then have like you know a few viper tokens hitting your wallet every day for the next year that's not a terrible position to be in uh even though it's not you know as nice as getting a thousand percent up front yeah uh, so do you want to show the emission schedule so so effectively like you know yeah. similar to what we were doing with DeFi kingdoms where you were getting um, like really aggressive multipliers on the reward structure. Um, well, yeah. here you can go back to go back to Viper Swap. Hold on, then that that takes it here. Oh, that one, I see. Yeah, here's um, the, but I was talking the emission schedule. Yeah, that's yeah, so yeah. The, to incentivize liquidity right pairing. It does cycles basically on the multiplier of the Viper. Um, yeah, so here you Viper can see when Viper Swap first launched, they had their first like huge <laughs> multiplier to initially initially incentivize people to actually you know put some money into these pools and make this protocol like a thing uh but that fell off very quickly in one week it was down to 125 then down to 64 the next week very few people who were savvy about this protocol like are able to participate super early on so it's a really nice schedule for them to have it fall off so soon and then cycle back up into these super high yield uh, times later when more people have a chance to find out about these protocols, uh, enter into positions over time. And again, we're now coming up right here. We're now on the 16. And then you can see we're about to cycle again into 32 next week, then 32 for another week, staying back down to 16. Uh, this is January. And then uh, all through January uh, until February here, we're staying at 8x. Yeah, so you're still. still having 8x for like a, at minimum 8x for effectively a month and a half period. Like if you want to go to the withdrawal fees thing. So, you know, as yeah, these so things start, you can, thing. you can plan ahead. So there's a, there's a also, fee structuring. Get to this page on Viper Swap. If you click like the info tab on the right, this document is in the actual Viper Swap like interface. Just yeah, for people if you're up that. here, this thing, and docs. here's the docs. Oop, just gotta add the ticker ticker. real quick <laughs> yeah so this is the way you can like look up all of their this is like their white paper basically you can find all their tokenomics and this the schedule for these and this is kind of why i was easy to find like i was googling the the white paper for this and could not find it like it took me a while to find this but yeah like if you're looking for it it's just in the documents on the actual website yeah so, so. that emission schedule and the withdrawal fees kind of play hand in hand so like if you can yeah. establish your position with about a week to spare like five days i guess you can get down to one percent withdrawal fee so you can plan when you're going to enter and exit so your withdrawal fee is low but you're also have an established position for the amplified rewards multiplier and so in that way um you know getting in slightly before it swaps over to these massive uh multipliers you you don't have to like you're not going to jump in and out of positions and take a huge withdrawal hit or a fee yeah. hit the nice thing about these fees is also that they are calculated based on the last uh, or the first deposit or the last withdrawal so, so you can if top you, off you can top off without resetting this fee but you can't top oh, off and then oh, withdraw in between yes yeah, so here's a question not... that somebody asked me that i didn't have the answer to that the guy should just ask you is how did they decide the pools like you know how they'll add like okay now fucking polygon jewels now a pair with two thousand percent or whatever 
who decides that they're adding Polygon? Like, where is that information? Uh, in theory, that is the Venom DAO. So the Viper X holders vote on that. Is that in practice or just in theory? Right. That now? is currently the governance is happening on a uh, like forum here, which you can still participate in as a Viper X holder. But in practice, it is not on chain governance yet. So it's still basically up to the devs to decide what happens on that front until that becomes decentralized and entirely implemented. Good to know like, that. And that's, is that kind of uniform for all DEXs? Like on Uniswap, are they choosing what rewards Uniswap people yeah. buy the Uniswap token? If people that's who a have a Uniswap case for token. token. Uh, so that's basically the reason why people want to hold viper token or sushi coin or uniswap token or you know cvx or uh wait crv it is or uh fx like all these all these protocol tokens that are go their governance shares the reason you want to own them is if you want influence over things like what gets rewards from the protocol what gets allocations and you know if you can decide a reward structure for a certain asset pair that influences deeper liquidity for that asset pair uh, the reason, like the people who are interested in governance shares on these protocols aren't necessarily oh, individuals as much as pro other protocols themselves. So for example, like, like this stake DAO is a protocol that is a front end for uh, DeFi strategies. Like you can come here and go to like BST, like Binance Smart Chain. Uh, and then I don't know, Binance Smart Chain strategies are kind of weak right now. The Ethereum ones I like though, like here's a passive Ethereum Forex is a dollar coin strategy making you 14% in stable coins. This is happening on a protocol level. It's like a front end that lets you interface with the strategy. This protocol owns a huge stake in, uh, I think, C CRV tokens. And most of these strategies happen on the curve. So here you can see the strategy levels leverages curve Forex pools. And the reason that that curve Forex pool has a high yield is because the protocol itself owns curve protocol like governance shares and then votes to so they can vote on stuff that supports to incentivize strategies. itself so it starts like when you get deeper in oh sorry when you get deeper into the like DeFi space it starts to make a lot more sense like at first i was like why are, are all these decentralized exchanges having these voting governance shares like who the fuck cares like how often do you want to vote on on your dex like as an individual who's just a trader doing the swaps there but now that I understand more of like the DeFi space isn't isn't all individual, but protocols interacting with each other. It's these protocols that want to have a governance say in each other so that they can align their incentives together. It actually makes a lot of sense why those tokens are worth money and why governance shares are, are valuable. Also, I mean, it is super valuable choosing like if you're able to allocate the staking bonus to your token that's like huge fucking utility for your token on that network so like yeah that is super valuable oh yeah like, yeah if we were able to add like neon token to viper swap and have it be a thousand percent apr paid in viper that would make neon token worth a shitload more than not having that so yeah that makes sense to me yeah so that's that's the part and then so if you wanted to own some of this governance share if you have viper token you would come up here to staking and then go to the viper pit and this is like a single asset staking where you're staking your Viper tokens and you get X Viper tokens for them. The X Viper tokens are getting a one third cut of all of the liquidity yield generated on this platform uh, paid in Viper. So basically the value of X Viper is always increasing relative to the value of Viper. And here you can see one X Viper is currently worth 1.35 Viper tokens. So currently you would buy the X Viper at this 1.35 rate essentially. And the longer you wait, the higher this rate will go. So by the time you withdraw, you'll be withdrawing more Viper than you initially deposited is how this like staking kind of works. And then these X Viper coins are the governance shares. So Viper on its own isn't the governance share. You have to stake it as X Viper. And then right now they actually have an additional incentive for a single Viper token staking where you can go to the Viper Nest after you've made your X Viper coins. And then here you can just stake X Viper tokens to earn stake, additional. Baby. And then this is going to pay you additional Viper token. Uh, yeah, I think the APR is like 50% or something. Or it was 25%. like 20, 25% or something. But that's yeah. on top of the liquidity yield you're earning from a third of all the liquidity happening on, uh, on the platform, which you can see right now. The platform itself is made up of about $28 million yeah, in liquidity. That's so much smaller than DeFi Kingdoms. 
<laughs> so, yeah. so real quick, oh, whoops, real quick on yeah, this yeah. one and like Max, you know, by all means, correct me if I'm wrong, but yeah, the reason these things can pop up, um, like a sushi swap, like a Viper swap, is these are direct clones of Uniswap, so they can basically copy all the source code because, yeah, because Harmony EOS is doesn't code. work with Ether source code. Like Ether source code works with yeah. all these layer two solutions because they're all built on the same source code, but. Uh, Wax is built on EOSIO, which is a totally different like coding language. So this stuff just doesn't copy paste over. So it's you either start from scratch. Which is why like Alcor does not look like Uniswap in every other swap because it's like literally different code that they build it from scratch. Yeah, basically that's yeah that's the short answer. There is like EOSIO is not as easy to implement. So I don't think Uniswap anyone's filter. implemented a protocol on EOS that acts in a similar way. If that were the case, then someone could easily port it over to Wax, but the yeah. the effort like, that would take I, to go in and do that is uh is higher yes. compared to what someone could do and just basically copy all the source code from Uniswap and then just add their own protocol and do the whole thing. That's also yeah. something totally like you could submit things to vote on for grants from Wax and like somebody building a legitimate DEX like I would absolutely vote for that with like all yeah. of my governance state because like we need that on Wax. Yeah. It's just nobody's building one right now. Besides here's, Alcor, Alcor, who knows what their team is doing? Like, here's also the other thing about what this is so far ahead of anything on Wax uh, is the automated market maker routing. So you can see here, I'm for example going to say I want to sell one Binance Smart Chain BNB uh, into Wagme token. What, there isn't a Binance Wagme pool on this on this exchange, but what's happening is Binance is trading into Viper, Viper is trading into One, and One is turning into Wagme. So the protocol does all of this for me on the on the back end. And on, if you're in that pool, if you're in the BSC yeah, BNB Viper pool, you're getting a, a a cut of those fees. If you're in the Viper yeah, so One you pool, you're getting a cut yeah. of those fees. If you're the One Wagme pool, you're getting a cut of those fees. And so looking at those routes also kind of helps you strategize on what the most advantageous pools yeah. are because if the vast majority of the token swaps are going through viper one then you'll know you'll get a decent amount of traffic through viper one through uh, a, a whole number of iterations of different token pairs because that is the deepest pool and easiest to swap through pool yeah so liquidity depth is super important in DeFi, and and here for i can show for an example one BNB token is getting me 1.35 Wagme coins, right? But if I now go to uh, like DeFi Kingdoms and trade one uh, BNB token here, let's do. I get way less slippage on DeFi Kingdoms than Viper. And that's just because there's more, there's deeper liquidity in DeFi Kingdoms nine times out of ten for most. But we're of the also, pools. I'm looking at the. Route, it depends so on the pool. The last part of the route here is one to wag me. So I need one token to just go between these pools instead. And I'll cut out the Viper pool entirely. So I'm trying to see if I'm going to get a better deal for my one BNB than I get 1.35. So here, check this out. If I do one BNB on uh, DeFi Kingdoms into one token, I'm going to get 3053 one for that. And then I can see if I come back here and I then take my one that I've gotten over on DeFi Kingdom. I'm getting three, four, five. Is that more or less? I, don't know. I lost track. <laughs> three. Oh, no, you're getting so more that way. Weird. Yeah, it's a better deal. So it's a better deal to stay here. So that has to do with arbitrage opportunities between b and b on viper swap and b and b on and if you're uh, moving and it one. looks arbitrary with one mm -hmm. one token like that but if you're moving large sums it uh, it's difference. definitely if you were to kind of test back and forth between different dexes available you know that difference could be to the tune of a few hundred bucks depending on how much money you're moving so it, it is something matters when you're moving, moving small sums like I'd say, like those little fees add up more when you're moving less. I guess money. yeah, it's a higher percentage of the total principal that you're losing to fees. So yeah, you're absolutely right. I started using the Harmony Bridge instead of just withdrawing to Binance on Qcoin because it's five dollars to withdraw by BNB from Qcoin, right. and it's like ends up being like one to two dollars to use the bridge on Harmony. And when you're moving thirty dollars at a time, like thirty or fifty bucks, that's like five dollars is a large portion of that. So like, did you want to go into the tranquil stuff as far as the lending piece, Max? I really like that stuff. So if if people want to know about I that, hold the audience. Anybody in the audience have any questions? Direction? Yeah, like, <laughs> we have any blank yeah. stares? 
So at this uh, point, Maggie Hodler said block blockchain RPG has been de-whitelisted. That's interesting for sure. There oh, was shit. something about how they were like, hold on, I got to find it. Tune wants to hear about Tranquil. Okay, so basically I here, this is, you can participate that. here in DeFi by basically contributing your assets as liquidity, and then you can earn a really, really aggressive currently. Uh, okay, really real aggressive. quick, real quick. So I just saw that uh, NFT Gamer TV was pointing out that as a way to to mitigate bot or to add a bot detection protocol to blockchain RPG, they lock up the NFTs of suspended or suspected bots and multi accounters that are staked in the game. And then that, I guess, potentially was a, a too aggressive move and has been de whitelisted on that account. At least that's what it looks like. Oh, damn. That's what Scooter just said. Interesting. It locks um, someone's something without noticing their body. But they're a judge, jury, executioner on how they suspect. Yeah, Atomica is not cool with that. Like, Atomica yeah. is very not cool with freezing people's assets. Yeah. So Sorry. Was, anyway, like, I just wanted to clarify that real quick. Yeah. That makes sense. Um, what are you asking about for Heroes, NFT69420? You said, what's the lowdown on Heroes? For DeFi Kingdoms? I mean, I feel like that's I, a that's very long asking. answer. Well, that's what I'm asking. Like, I don't even know what that question is directed at. That sounds shitty. Good vibes. Oh, yeah, man, heroes that... are a big rabbit hole. We can maybe go into that a little bit after Max goes into tranquil stuff, but there's a lot of information on the heroes. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. A, that's a long one in and of itself for sure. So here I'm looking up. I'm, this is my hero that or my my DeFi Kingdom position that we set up on uh, on one of these tech talks like three weeks ago. Uh, where I did, I bridged twenty dollars over from Wax, and we turned it into Harmony, and then I bought some BSC BNB, and I bought some jewels to put into the liquidity pool pair. Uh, so this is a fork of Viper Swap, is literally the exact same thing we were doing on Viper a second ago, but built like a video game. And then here's like, uh, here's their liquidity yield right now. So you can see that I'm on this account. I actually have a position in this. Uh, pair and I'm earning the 700%. So now let's see. I'm going to use that to swap into some dollar coin and then participate in the Tranquil protocol with that dollar. So here's the jewels I've been mining. Put these monkey fighting snakes on this money to Friday play. <laughs> I made a dollar and 58 cents. Uh, and remember, uh, we started with. Uh, what was 20 it? bucks we or something with, yeah we started with 20 bucks and i still have that like 20 bucks in the in the liquidity pool i'm also down to nft 69 420 i'm down to chat about the heroes in discord i'll just hijack hijack this entire show for the next 45 minutes if we talk about heroes so <laughs> yeah i got i got a, gotta eat a soon anyway and then jump yeah, back into saying. making me and stuff so you can, uh but here this is so i've basically just initiated a trade i got my balance so i just did a swap there i got one a dollar 59 now as dollar coin so now i'm going to go over to uh tranquil uh dot finance which uh and then sign in with my wallet which takes me to this page uh on this page i can see here us dollar coin i'm, I'm offered 4.18 percent from the market reward that's paid in dollar coin and an additional 6.83 percent reward and that reward is paid in tranquil token so i can participate in this by simply going here taking my dollar coin depositing it into this uh the very first time i do this with the wallet it'll ask me to uh like approve, approve the token. protocol first that's a uh, every DeFi protocol will do that so it succeeded here and then now what happens i can click on go to dashboard now it's deposited my one dollar 59 cents into this uh, tranquil protocol and now I'm earning this 11% APY and down here you can see my rewards in tranquil will start to tick up this will start ticking up every like three seconds or so probably not going to be noticeable because it's not a crazy amount of money so this is also not going to be that much but anyway once the asset is in this side of the protocol there's this collateralize button I can basically click and sign a transaction uh, by doing this it allows the protocol to use my deposited asset as collateral 
and that collateral affords me the ability to take loans uh, up to currently up to 60% of the collateral. So here you can see 60% of my dollar 70 or dollar 60 is 96 cents. So I now have the ability to take a loan up to 96 cents out, but in any of these other assets that I choose. Yeah, and so, uh, sorry, yeah, I think you already said it, it was 60% of your collateral. You of can my borrow. collateral, correct. Yeah. So the collateral is still earning this, this uh, APY, no matter if it's collateralized or not, that's not gonna affect you earning this. So you, you can participate in this protocol simply as a single, like as a like savings account, if you will, because there is no counterpart to this asset. You have no uh, exposure risk really to like a, uh, to a fluctuation in price. Uh, there is still smart contract failure risk like there is with anything on, on uh, DeFi, but that's very mitigated by, you know, this is a fork of the compound protocol, which is heavily audited and I think currently has a locked balance of over $14 billion on the Ethereum mainnet. Uh, and this protocol is, I'm not sure if their audit has been published yet, but they have been audited now by a third party. And the, I'm not sure if the third party published it just yet, but I know. Yeah, the I think there's 46, it says 46 million is in, it's the plot. Oh, yeah. It's so collateral. Currently, yeah, currently people have market. deposited $46 million into this protocol on this side. And you can see that. Trump change. It's yeah. I mean, in DeFi, that's not an insane number, but also if you look at the Tranquil Protocol token market cap is like two, two and a half million dollars, two almost three million dollars, when the protocol itself is the shepherd of you know fifty million ish, is pretty. Uh, it doesn't feel overvalued to me anyway at that price. But the proposition here that is really interesting is on the borrow side. So now that I have collateral. I can borrow any of these assets and you can see the APY here is positive. And that's because like, for example, I could now borrow, I'll just go straight dollars to dollars. I could borrow up to like 90 cents. So I'll borrow 50 cents in dollar coin here. So I'll say, give me 50 cents, borrow, assign the borrow transaction. And then uh, once it succeeds, the 50 cents is just in my wallet, which I can just go back to Uniswap with or Viper swap and buy anything with that now, whatever I want. Yeah, but you can choose any of those assets. Yeah, so you yeah, know. you can choose any of them. I'm just borrowing what I have collateralized because if I were to borrow, say, Ethereum and then the price of Ethereum goes up in dollars, then the amount of collateral I owe goes up as well. And I become in risk of losing my uh, collateral because the price of the asset I'm borrowing is increasing. So yeah, so as borrowing in stable dump, coins dump. and then swapping into the coin that you're trying to, you know, uh, trying to play the market on is is usually a better route. So now here you can see in assets on my wallet, I now have. There you go, 0. Uh, 0.5 USDC, one USDC, there it is. I, I should have, yeah, there it is, USDC. So it is there. So I have my half of a USDC, which I can also just take and just redeposit here if I want to. Yeah, so that, that idea is similar, is, is the same as like, borrowing on margin in the stock market um but this is all programmatically executed so if you were to borrow ethereum the ethereum price dumps it's not worth the amount that you borrow then they would margin call you and liquidate the collateral that you put up to pay off the loan. Teams question yeah okay what is yeah what's the question what's so the so when I mac goes to APY you and still use 60 percent of my assets for other stuff right yeah so That's when you great. see on the right side max if you hover over on the right side the two so okay here, that this is i was about to say the value proposition here that's really wild is currently that so i'm earning for my usdc collateral i'm earning in the collateral itself four percent so four percent of my two dollars now uh, in a year i'll this will be you know two dollars plus an additional like eight cents because it's four percent of the two dollars uh and i'll be earning 6.8 percent in this tranquil token which you can see i'm already starting to collect here but now on the borrow side I owe 10.4% APY in interest, which will be billed to this borrowed balance in USDC or in whatever the currency I'm borrowed. But at the same time as owing that, I'm also earning 12.7% of the value of this position APY paid in Tranquil. So that's this uh, is adding to this. So this position itself, if I were to claim this, turn this into USDC and use that to pay off my uh, loan, this loan is actually a net positive 2% APY position. So it's effectively 
it's effectively making money to borrowing money is making money if you are uh maintaining this interest position by paying down the interest with the reward that you're earning and that's in addition to the reward that's being the apy reward structure that's being created by the collateral too right correct so i'm getting that from both sides so i'm getting this yes, 10% so borrow the amount is and, value and, value and the collateralized amount is value yeah tune wants to know is trank a governance token like viper so trank is a governance token but trank actually has a really cool use case beyond that where if you click onto this trank uh tab up here you can stake your trank tokens to get a cut of the protocol's fees all the fees that are being generated by all this interest being charged to users uh, uh 75 percent of all of those generative fees are distributed to people who stake trank tokens so here you can stake i have my point two in my wallet here uh if you approve it for example this this time i haven't done it yet so you have to approve this is a one time per wallet type approval transaction and this is a so, six month lock period so keep that so what happens here is you could take your uh, tranquil token lock and stake them which now they are, like Mark said, six months, I won't be able to unlock them unless I pay a 50% burn penalty. So if, if I lock one Trank token now and then try to unlock it, I would only get half of one back and the other half would be burned entirely from circulation. Uh, so that is like, there is a risk here that, you know, if Trank will drop, so you're, not, you're stuck in this position. But now that I'm in here, I'm earning every block, a portion of all of the protocol's fees in all of these different assets. Is so it I'm equal earning to each asset. It's based on the assets uh, fee, like use. So the more that it's being used to borrow, the more you're making. So I have a pretty decent stake in this on my main wallet, and the USDC and USDT assets are making the most, which lines up with if we look at the market, they are the most actively borrowed assets. So 64% of the balance of USDT that is available is actually being borrowed currently. 55% uh, of the balance of available USDC is being borrowed, while only like 28% of Ethereum is being borrowed right now, and only 24% of one. But yeah, the so fact like, that you can get stake rewards paid in blue chip assets like wrapped yeah. Bitcoin and Ethereum and stable coins is pretty insane. I think that's really legit. And at 123% yeah, APR of the value of your locked balance right now, it's quite decent uh as far as taking tranquil token off of the circulating market and it's a really interesting use case beyond governance where you can participate in the protocols you know success by just owning protocol tokens and staking them beyond that you can pair your tranquil tokens with one token on sushi swap deposit them into their liquidity pool which if you click here it'll just take you to tranquil you would change this one to one and then you would flip this to liquidity, just like you're familiar with on uh, Alcor. Alcor. And then here you would basically, you know, add your uh, liquidity pair. You'd say, you know, approve and then supply liquidity. Once you've done that, you could jump back over here and you'll see your liquidity tokens right here. You'll approve this, you'll deposit them, and then you will earn 141% APR of the balance of your liquidity paid in tranquil tokens on top so this is similar to what viper swap is offering in liquidity incentives on its platform right now but this is tranquil protocol directly offering in liquidity incentives uh you know to help create liquidity on tranquil tokens uh and then beyond that if you don't want to lock your balances up uh for six months you can just stake the tranquil directly for the APR paid in only Tranquil, which is 51%, which you are getting that here too, that you can see the Tranquil is coming in here as well. Uh, but you don't get any of the other uh, blue chip assets if you don't lock your tokens for six months. Uh, so MC69420 wants to ask what exchanges are these tokens on slash Qcoin? One is on Qcoin, but most of these tokens are not on Qcoin. Most of one these is on Binance as well. Yeah, one is getting kind of blue chippy these days. It's and there's an of... Ethereum bridge as well. Oh. So you can bridge Ethereum assets into one and then have a one wrapped Ethereum yeah, and then swap that. Transition to the Army bridge. Yeah, so Tranquil token is actually, you can tell it'll definitely be deepest liquidity will be on Sushi Swap because that's where they're incentivizing it. So here is where you trade into Tranquil if you wanted tranquil token also if you look uh, on coin market cap and you look up a coin it'll say 
um, like what markets it's on. So yeah. it'll tell you the major My exchanges. Market doesn't always have all the DeFi positions though. Yeah, I'm saying, but yeah. for exchanges though. Yeah, for centralized exchanges. So here yeah, we're yeah. back on. If we go back on Viper Swap, there's an easy uh, up here. There's an easy link into the bridge. So here you can click on the bridge. This bridge is so you, fucking cool. <laughs> it takes you to the Harmony Horizon bridge. So here you can move between blockchains. If you have your assets on Ethereum and you wanted to move them to Harmony, you could move, you know, any of these like coins. So now let's say we want to go from uh, Ethereum or from our Harmony into Binance Smart Chain. So we want to do one into here. Now I can say, okay, I want to use my, I do have BNB. If you do BP20, you can also do like the BSC, BUSD. Yeah, that's the one. Hold a bit of in your wallet. Let's yeah, see, BUSD, there it is. Yeah, check is here. Your wallet's not connected. Yeah, behave. Let's see. You, click, you have to click under uh, where it says Harmony. Not okay, do have a little bit of BNB. Okay, here, yeah. So here, Binance Network, MetaMask. If you're going from Harmony to Binance, you need to sign into the Harmony, not the Binance one. All right, here we go. So you have to click MetaMask, not the wallet extension. <laughs> that one, yeah. And then that should sign into your. Uh, Harmony Binance. And then for the Binance wallet, you just type in the thing. You don't sign into both simultaneously. You can only be on one network at a time for. Connect. That bridge costs like, when you're going to Binance, it costs, I think, 6 1 is the fee, which is pretty damn cheap to, for a cross chain bridge. Like, it also makes it so it's like, you don't need to trade all these pairs NFT 60, 69 420 because you can just swap it into. BNB, which is tradable anywhere, or you can swap it into Ether, which is tradable anywhere. Yeah. So, like, it doesn't really matter what where these pairs are traded because you can get out of them so easily and get to other networks. At least that's how I view it. Like, my exit yeah. strategy is not to ex exit directly through any of the tokens on Harmony. Yeah, exactly. It's all, you always want to go through the main token and then move into, like, if I wanted to move out of Harmony into Ethereum, I would just buy some wrapped Ethereum and then bridge it over to the Ethereum mainnet. Same with like, if I want to move value into Binance, I'd probably buy just BNB token and bridge the BNB directly so that I can then go to PancakeSwap and use the BNB on PancakeSwap to buy the other asset that I want on Binance. Because that's definitely where the liquidity for those tokens will be the deepest. Like, no question. Shit. I do yeah, so, <laughs> and then with the bridges, you pay, you pay fees on both sides of the bridge. So you pay the fee on the... You don't pay a you don't, you don't pay a fee on the Binance side when you bridge over to Binance. It just shows up in your wallet. Yeah, you, so you just have to like put your the wallet chain in. that you're exiting. You pay the one fee to send the coins to the bridge to be locked up, and then you pay a fee. Like you do like three transactions on the one side, and then it just shows up in your wallet on the BNB side. Hmm. Here's my BNB address. So I'd be right here. And the Ether wallet works for that. And then we're doing BSC. Marcy's going wild over here. Wallet. She's a wild girl. Let's see. What is the asset that I have? Is it BUSD? Assets. All right. I got to change back to Harmony Mainnet. And then a good way to get the BSC smart chain if you don't have it in your MetaMask is just go to PancakeSwap and then click connect to BSC Mainnet and it'll add, it'll add it for you. Uh, let's see here. BSC BNB is the one I'm trying to do, not BUSD. So, where is that one? I think I was just doing BUSD because, like, I was buying into THG and THC and stuff, and there it is. there's a shit ton of volume in the pools for BUSD for like buying into other stuff on a oh, pancake okay. swap is what I use when I'm trying to buy into Phaeton Arena. Which there you do have to pay a fee to wrap your, uh, like, I think at some point I told you guys you can one-to-one -one wrap your BNB for free, but you do have to pay, like, the transaction fee. There's no, like, trade fee, but there is the gas fee. It's not totally free. Gas is pretty cheap, though, on, like, I haven't had an issue with gas fees on BNB yet. Kind of like Harmony, where it's very nominal. Marcy, don't scratch my floor. 
Mercy. Mm, that's shit. My food's here. I got it. If I can dip out, but yeah. Uh, do you want to walk through the like last part of the bridge, maybe? So I can. Um. Or we could do the bridging another. Yeah, but we can do bridging another time. Also, I feel like basically, a lot of the time it the had. What was that? Just the next part is just signing the transactions, and it shows up in your wallet. You pretty much got it there. Yeah, I guess that's true. I'm gonna. But yeah, you just like pick your wallet and send it, and it's pretty easy. This is a centralized function, though. If there's an issue with it and the money doesn't come, you can reach out to them and they can fix it for you, which is kind of nice too. So I'm this is like this. No issues with it though. Yeah, I've I've not, but I know a few people who have had issues with it reached out to the team and had those issues resolved within minutes. So this is that's also, I guess, the risk too is, you know, if somebody fucks with the protocol, it can like that's a risk with any bridge asset asset just be aware of that like if people can figure out how to fuck with the protocol they can make take the assets out of the protocol and then the assets become not worth what they're supposed to be worth yeah exactly so the the harmony horizon bridge we were just looking at has been independently audited several times already and yeah you gotta assume there's millions of dollars in these contracts if somebody could exploit them they would have already but that is a point of failure that could happen yeah, it's it's why really diehard OG people in the Bitcoin space will also not consider wrapped Bitcoin real Bitcoin, because at the end of the day, you know, it is still Bitcoin that's permissioned behind a bridge, so it is not impossible for your wrapped Bitcoin to not, you know, make it back to the Bitcoin mainnet. Although, very unlikely, wrapped Bitcoin is a really really robust protocol with like millions and millions in trust trusted like uh issued bitcoin it's been around for years too no issue but yeah if you try to do yeah. these things if you're trying to get into thetan arena or you're just trying to move stuff into tranquil or what have you we can always like chop it up with you on discord or dms or whatever so we can I'm always definitely kinda... be playing some more thetan arena today I'm yeah try and help you walk artwork. through these things the so nice thing about cool. understanding how to use bridges too is that you can start to trade uh, assets that are native Ethereum assets, but on blockchains that are not Ethereum. So that, like for example, the Harmony mainnet has way cheaper fee structures, and you can trade a lot of Ethereum mainnet assets on there. So I could trade like, you know, Ethereum against Curve Protocol or Ethereum against uh, Compound tokens on on viper swap and pay very little in in gas fees so i could make trades for like ten dollars at a time and that type of trading like ten dollar trades is just not viable on ethereum yeah i mean that's real ethereum i mean you can unwrap yeah. that one one eth and that is real ethereum it's not some sort of like weird fork or whatever it is yeah. it is a truly wrapped token that when you unwrap it the value of the one ethereum have will become a, a true ethereum value so you can yeah. kind of do some more frequent trades on these in these wrapped assets save on fees and then when you're ready yeah. unwrap it into its native chain um but it's not like some sort of nefarious weird clone on a yeah. different data or anything it's, like that. it's definitely becoming more of a standard practice in the DeFi space to move to sub chains or uh for like basically other blockchains to like trade wrapped assets instead of doing those trades on ethereum uh we'll see how that you know changes as ethereum fees evolve and stuff but for now it is you know it is possible to do and participate in DeFi with 10 20 dollars and uh it's just you know not on not on ethereum right now yeah everybody else can wrap up for stream thank you so, so much for watching we'll be back live tomorrow at 2 p.m pacific time i guess that's like 20 o'clock utc right i think i don't know mm -hmm. about it 20 o'clock poker we got a our our sale this Saturday, our ultra rare collaboration street five new signs. Uh, all that information is in announcements in our Discord. And Carlos, play us out. Hey 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 everybody! My name is Carlos Matos, and I am coming from New York City, New York. Let me tell you guys that I am so excited. I am so happy. I am really so thrilled to be right now sharing this amazing, glorious, super, super exciting time of my life with all of you guys. And let me tell you that we are really changing the world. Mm -mm -mm. As we know the world is not anymore the way it used to be. Good night, everybody.
All right, everybody. There's nobody to raid into, so have a good day. Have a good rest of your week. Happy I Tuesday. hope you're blessed by the RNG gods and pull nothing but mythics.